Well, Eric Ten Hag has come out and really talked a lot about the game of United versus Manchester City. His first Manchester City derby to manage. And I think he is really in a much better position than many of the managers that really were into when they are managing their first Manchester City derby. Sorry, their Manchester derby <coughs> at this juncture. Four games won in the row. He has really found his first starting eleven. Though the only question is on who is really going to play alongside Ericsson in that double midfield pivot. Casemiro or Scott McTominay. That's a huge pick that most of us are really waiting to see what Eric Ten Hag is going to go on with. Then, then um, the other is all about the center forward who is really going to start after news coming in through from the manager that Anton Martial and Marcus Rashford have been training with Manchester United and he's really going to go ahead and really conduct what we call a training session tomorrow, tomorrow morning to see who is really fit to really make it to the squad of Manchester United but for to my knowledge I really believe that these two are really going to be part of the match squad now welcome to this channel smash the like button comment and share the managers we talked about um, he has talked about Pep Guardiola, he has talked about Aaron Haaland and very many other players at Manchester United, Harry Maguire too, not forgotten. So smash the like button, comment and share and endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. I'm happy to let you know that this is the last video of the day and tomorrow morning we are going to be having the match preview of Manchester United playing away at Man City. I'm going to give you my preview and everything you need to know about this game and who has won a lot of games in the previous games or meetings at Etihad where the game of football is going really to happen. Now, Eric Ten Hag talked about the following that most people really were surprised about but for me I was not surprised about it. I'm going to give you the reason. Ten Hag said, Anton Martial has been training with the group all week. Really happy with the situation. Marcus Rashford also joined training. So we were happy with that. So I had lots of stories being put out all there and also did that story about Marcus Rashford and Anton Martial doubtful. Saying doubtful is not a confirmation that players are not going to take part into that game of football. You get there is a difference between doubtful and ruled out. Like Harry Maguire totally ruled out of the Manchester Derby and is not going to be part of the squad. He's not in contention to come in and really play or make it to the squad of Manchester United that's traveling to Etihad. That's it. But for Anton Martial and Marcus Rashford, the word used was doubtful, meaning that we were waiting for the manager to come out and give us the final word as I told you in that video I did yesterday that they were doubtful and the manager has really come out and really told us that they have been, they've been training this week, especially Anton Martial has been training with a group all week really happy with the situation and Marcus Rashford too joined them. Now, when you look at Anton Martial, he last played a game for United or a competitive game for United on the 17th of, of August when we beat Liverpool by two goals to one. You remember that very well and really set up an assist for Marcus Rashford into that game of football when he really looked great. And you know Marcus Rashford when he's really having a lot of distance to run with the ball with his pace, obviously, he will outpace anyone. For the best answer, ask the Arsenal fans outside there because they really felt the impact of him when he is really beating the high line of Arsenal twice in that game that Arsenal beat, that United beat Arsenal by three goals to one. So, Anton Martial has been out for close to a month and now the manager came out in the game of Sheriff and said Anton Martial is doing in video training. That's what he said. And I had it in mind, though I never wanted to portray it out there, that Anton Martial is one of those players that is really going to be back. And I really felt like it wouldn't take him this long because the Achilles injury got. He got it in training and I believe that it was handled very well. And the reason as to why he had to return for this game of football is that he was given ample time. Ten Hag is not a manager who believes in playing players who are really injured. He doesn't believe in that. He rather goes in for a young player other than destroying the career of a player because he knows that they still have a lot of games to play and we are still at just the primary stage of the season because we've only played six games. You get? We are left with 31 games to play, meaning that even if you lose the first six games and all your players are back fit, you can really cope up again because we saw Man City last season. You know, it lost close to its first two opening games. But remember, they won the Premier League last season. So it shows you that these beginning games are important, but not as important 
for risking your players who are really injured. So it's better to make your players fully fit to prepare for the end of the season, especially from March. You know that very well up to May because Alex Ferguson said if a truly team can win, can win close to 15 out of the games from March to May, then it can the team can really put itself in a better position to go on and really win it. So Mark, Anton Martial is back. Marcus Rashford is back. We are waiting to see what the lineup is going to be looking like. And I think tomorrow I'm really going to come in here and redo the need for. Ronaldo being in quotation to start, I doubt. I doubt. With his performance at the Portuguese national team, I really believe that he really put in a very bad performance. Missing out on three seaters is really something that even led to the supporters of Portugal to go in and really boo him for the very first time in his career. I decided which goes by the names of Portugal where they are playing in Braga. So that sends us a clear point that with the way Eric Ten Hag really trusts Anton Martial and Rashford, that means one of those is really going to lead the line. But the question is, who is going to play 90 minutes? So we are waiting to see who is really going to go on and really play 90 minutes in there for you. But let's wait and see because when Martial was returning from injury in the game of Liverpool, he only played 45 minutes. Is he only going to play 45 minutes with this game of football? Let's wait and see what Eric Ten Hag is going to do. That was what he told us about Anton Martial and Marcus Rashford. That is a double injury boost at United as they prepare for the Manchester Derby. Then on Eric Ten Hag, sorry. Eric Ten Hag on Harry Maguire, remember he got an injury and he's out. He came out and told us that I have to coach him and back him. I back him because I believe in him. I can see his qualities. Quality is there. Almost 50 caps for England. He has, the, he, has, he, has, he has high potential. Then it's about him. We all believe in him. I believe that Ten Hag is just playing what we call precautionary. That's it. But Inside him, he knows that this guy can't fit his system and can't play for United, especially <clears throat> under Eric Ten Hag, because the aspects that really are most important in the Ten Hag way he wants to play, Harry Maguire doesn't possess any. You get? He's been, he's been said to be one of the best ball-playing centre-backs, but I really doubt nowadays because you saw what he did in the game of England. He gifted our penalty and even the third goal. So I believe Eric Ten Hag also knows it deep inside him that Harry Maguire isn't a central defender that is really good for United setup and is doing this really to prevent more damage on him. And I know time is going to come for him to go out and really leave. There is a story I'm planning to do tomorrow after doing the predicted lineup and match preview of Man City versus Match United on this channel of. Samuel Lucas coming out and saying that if Eric, if Harry Maguire doesn't secure his future this season, then he will look onto leaving United in the summer. Obviously, when you're at the age of 30, like Harry Maguire, and things are really not going your way at a club like Manchester United, yet the players you're really competing with are really younger than you, and they're really better than you quality-wise, and the manager looks like he wants to bring in the centre-back, the best thing to do is to relieve of yourself the duties of United and find another club that is going to give you that is going to give you uh, regular football and obviously I think that will happen so Eric Ten Hag is just trying to control the damage and not really put him onto the spell but clocking 30 years of age what is he going to learn I doubt I doubt that's why you see at least Scott McTominay at 25 is learning mm, Rashford at 24 is learning Mm, but Freddy, who is clocking 30, is not learning because you cannot tell me that you can really teach something. You can teach, you can teach a player at 30 new things. That's it. That's out. And it's already said in the English vocabulary and idioms and sayings that you can't teach an old monkey new tick. Sorry, an old monkey does not learn new, new tactics. So I think Harry Maguire is really on his way out of Manchester United. And Den Hag continue to say the following about Maguire that is doing quite well but there is always room for improvement if he believes in his own skills he will be back and I'm convinced of that his abilities are really high which abilities are really high nothing is really high for Harry Maguire why he has not yet proven to us that he can play into a high line that Ten Hag really believes in. And if at all he has failed to go on and really capitalize in this kind of football, where Eric Ten Hag sometimes really believes that, oh, let me sit a little bit back and then 
be tight because Harry Maguire can't defend. He can't defend. He's a calamity. You saw him in the games we lost against Brentford. Sorry, Brighton. For that game, all those two goals, he really had a hand in them. Brentford, I think he never really did any mistake, but obviously the Malia got to know that no, Lisandro Martinez is a new partner in the names of Rafael Verani. And unless otherwise Rafael Verani gets an injury or Lisandro Martinez, I believe this guy, the, he, his days at United are over. And secondly, if he has failed to start, when Eric Ten Hag has not yet emphasized his particular way of playing, when he's going to start? Because when Ten Hag really impacts his Ten Hag ball and philosophy at United, the qualities of the defenders he needs are supposed to be quick. Is he quick? No, he's not quick. And is he good in defending? No. So that is where I will rule out Harry Maguire. And I really believe that though that's the end of days of Harry Maguire at Manchester United. He has really captured, has really gotten an injury. And let's wait and see what's going to happen for him. And obviously, it's a positive because every time he doesn't start for United, we win. And you never know, we might take the same record at City and we can really put up a fighting spirit and really win at City. Then... Then Ten Hag on the Manchester Derby, he said, it excites me, you do everything to win. So it shows you that this manager is really great in here and he wants lots of things to happen as far as winning is concerned about the Derby and he can't wait to go ahead and really see himself win against one of the managers that he really believes in that he worked under at Bayern Munich in the names of in the names of um that is pep guardiola in here onto the channel which goes by the names of united matters channel then this was something i was really looking for before i really handed that ended the harry Maguire. ten hag says player manager coaches we all believe in him i'm convinced he will turn around i don't believe he's going to turn around he won't he won't because he will cause us a mistake he will cause us a mistake. And I believe the only way you're going to see Harry Maguire thrive at Manchester United is when Casemiro really fits into that team very well to protect him a lot. But even when, but even the little times he's exposed to an attack, he is really beaten. So I don't see anything happening at Harry Maguire. That's it, guys. I'm sorry to say, but I don't see anything positive that Harry Maguire is going to produce at the age of 30. Then Ten Hag on players' mental health, he says, it is an aspect of top football. It is an aspect of our work. We set conditions for that. We also have experts about. So, talking about having experts, Raf Ragnik was the orchestrator of this, bringing in a psychologist in his first week at Manchester United that, the, that really tried to boost the mindset of these players. But Ten Hag is saying... It is an aspect of top football. It's an aspect of work. We set conditions for that. So United players are really being worked on by psychologists to really make sure that their mental health is really great. But I believe mental health is really self-driven. Even if, if at all you are weak-hearted, then even if you are taken to a psychologist, it would be hard for you to heal. But if at all you really have a big heart and really believe in yourself that you can turn things around, then you can't go out there and really worry about things concerning mental health. Because you've seen very many players like Bruno having our season and trying to overturn it right now and is one of the best players playing at United under Eric Ten Hag. Look at players like um, Rafael Verani. Last season was not all good for him, but he has really gone ahead to turn around things. The other player, Diego Dello, look at him. It's all about self-belief. I believe in self-belief. And if at all you really don't believe in yourself, then nothing won't change about you. So to me, I don't believe in terms of things that are really being put out there as far as self-belief is concerned or all this. Because Harry Maguire is one of the most affected people, why doesn't he really come out and really get better? Yet they are really attending to the same psychologist and the experts are really, really working on their health, health on their mental health. <laughs> so it's, it plays a part, a part it plays a small part, but the big part is played by the individual. It's all about your self-confidence that you are having. And if at all you don't really improve on the way of playing, 
then obviously you're going to be bored and really exposed a lot. Now, Ten Hag on working under Pep Guardiola, you know that he really worked with him at Bayern Munich and said, no person is the same, so I have to stick by myself and then learn a lot from many in football. I admire, I admire him a lot. He's not only successful, but doing it in a certain way that attracts football, that attracts people to football. So to me, that's respect given to Pep Guardiola and really deserves it because as a person who has been watching football for very many years, I saw this guy coming in through after United beat Barcelona in the semi-final of 2008 and um, Raycard was really sucked was really sucked from the managerial role of Barcelona and the manager who was coaching Barcelona B was really brought in. That is a man who goes by the names of Pep Guardiola. In his first season, he played very well. In 2009, he reached the Champions League final and he won it with Messi, Xavi, Iniesta and he beat United by two goals to nil in the finale. I think you still remember that very well. So this guy has won Champions League trophies with Barcelona. He has won league trophies in Spain, Germany and the Premier League. And he is really one of those managers that don't change their style of play. And Eric Ten Hag admires him because of that and is going to have to let us know that this is the reason as to why he really loves him a lot and he puts in everything to see to it that he really secures the best out of him, especially the way he's winning and playing the way that attracts people to the football. Obviously, the best tiki-taka manager that has really orchestrated the system fully is Pep Guardiola. The way he plays, he doesn't change. He goes on to really orchestrate the same way of play on the field, not until he either wins or loses. So Ten Hag really admires him about that. But the most important thing is that Ten Hag says that he wants to stick to be himself and learn from others, but he wants to stick to be himself. And that's what he said about Pep Guardiola. Then he was asked about Pep Guardiola suggesting last season that he would be that would have been a good fit at Man City. Remember last season he really said Pep Guardiola really came out and hailed Ten Hag and recommended him that he would be one of those managers that City would really look at to replace him at, at Etihad. <laughs> he said, it's a nice compliment, but I'm 100% convinced. I chose United with everything in it and I didn't regret it for one second. So, Ten Hag is really one of those managers that really excites me on the way he really goes head to head on questions. He does not bypass, he just comes out and tells you the truth, meaning that he wanted United. And you know why he wanted United? He said that everywhere he has been coaching, he has found hurdles and teams with a downfall. Then he raises them again. If he has been able to do it at FC20, at uh, Ajax, then why can't we be able to do it at Manchester United? A team that is really having the finances and players of better quality. That's what Ten Hag really believes in, that he can really go ahead and do it at Manchester United. And he's 100% convinced that he is really going to go ahead and really do it at Manchester United. And obviously, we are seeing the fruits of this guy. No manager has come out and really transformed United like he is ever since Alex Ferguson left, apart from Louis van Gaal. But for him, he's transforming it in the right direction that... He is trying to adapt to the system of the Premier League to really get those wins. But at least you are seeing cameos of Ten Hag ball coming in through that are really giving us goals. That first goal against Arsenal, you saw it very well. The quick passing, the intensity, the fighting back of these players and the way we really make it hard for our opponents to really put the ball in the back of the net. Those are attributes of a man who goes by the names of Eric Ten Hag. Then on the derby, say it excites me. You do everything to win that game, obviously meaning that he's going to go out to win it. Then he said on the derby, I have played many derbies. I know what they are, what the rivalry, what they do with each other. I know it is the most important game in the Manchester area. And I believe in Ten Hag, to go on and really get a result at, at, that, at, at Manchester City because he really has self-belief in him and he is a strong lad. When you look at the way he really replies these questions, it shows you that he has really gotten he has really gotten his tactics right and he knows that he's going to go ahead and really make it hard for City because you just sit down and evaluate or cut out an equation on how 
you've been really going and not conceding very many goals from conceding four nil against brighton to conceding one against liverpool conceding none against southampton and lesser city and conceding one against arsenal and shelf is conceding zero that shows you that it's going to be hard for Man City to go ahead and really put that ball at the back of the net. And as we make it hard for this team to score against us, we'll have better ball players going forward. When we get to that ball in the midfield area, especially after pressing them, we obviously do the needful and really create chances. So that's what Ten Hag is all about. And he knows that it's the most important game in the area. Now, the moment City wins, they will say Manchester is painted blue. The moment United wins, Manchester is painted red. So he knows how good this game is and how much it's going to impact on the mindset of the players and the enemies, or sorry, the other opponents we're really going to play in the Premier League. Because United adding a fifth win against City would mean that they've beaten three teams in the top six, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester City. That would be a very huge moral boosting win that we would love at Manchester United. Then Ten Hag on the dub again. I approach this by looking at ourselves, Manchester United. We want to win every game. The aim for Sunday is nothing else. We have to do our best and, of course, a good plan and the execution. This guy, every time he's telling us that he wants to win every game, and for the first two games, People were really doubtful about him, but after those two games, he really came out and really showed us that this is possible by winning the next four games. And out of those, they were teams that we lost to last season and we've won. One, we lost away at Leicester City last season. We went, we went and got a result. We drew away at Southampton last season. We went and got a result. You get that is positive. Those are three points. Liverpool beat us. At Old Trafford last season, I think five goals to nil. He beat them by two goals to one. Arsenal came there and suffered a 3-2 defeat at Old Trafford and he beat them by three goals to one. So it shows you that things are really going on and changing. And obviously, with his plan and approach, he is really looking at United winning all the games you're going to play. And obviously, you believe in him as how he has really transformed this team. The game of Man City is really one of those that we should turn around because last season we lost four goals to one at Manchester City or at Etihad. But this time around, I believe, Ten Hag believes this is really going to go ahead and really not happen in the way because he has an execution plan and he knows how to play against Pep Guardiola and his team because he knows him in and out. You get? And when you make it hard for Man City to really score, they get frustrated. And the good thing is that United can create chances. We can create chances with Ericsson in that midfield area. I expect Anthony to really bluster and blast or explode tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow when United is playing Man City. Sancho having a very good game. Martial and Rashford returning. What a very huge boost for Manchester United in a game of such a caliber. So he says... He has to do his best, of course, a good plan and the execution to really get a result against Man City. But I believe, I really believe that we are really going to go ahead and really have a result. The moment I heard that Martial and Martial and uh, Rashford are really doubtful, I was laid down a little bit internally. But them being a variable for this game, I believe we can now go all out hard and really get the best result which is a win. I believe United can go ahead and win this game. Though people are not giving it a chance, they are rating City, but teams like Crystal Palace have gone here this season and scored two goals past City, but because they are really having a very quirky defense, that's why they never won that game. But if at all United goes two goals up against City, I believe it's going to be very hard for them to come out and really get back to us because we'll just sit back and hit them on the break as they attack. We'll really get them and really hit them on the break and really extend the lead something that um something that patrick vera couldn't do so i believe that if crystal palace went there and did that we can also go there and do it in there for you then ten Hag talked about the deadliest striker in the premier league right now who has scored 11 goals in seven games that is eric ten Hag. sorry it's not eric ten Hag. he's airing harland he said we don't play against Haaland. We play against Man City. We are convinced of our capabilities. If we act as a team, then we can beat our opponents. That is the belief we need. And we need it even more 
even more on Sunday. So he is trying to really get this debate to where it's supposed to be. He's putting it back to the level terms. People, we are so much talking about Haaland. And guys, <clears throat> Haaland is not a threat to me. Although people are afraid of Haaland, but I'm not afraid of Haaland. I'm afraid of De Bruyne. I'm afraid of Bernardo Silva. I'm afraid of Riyad Mahrez. I'm afraid of um, Cancelo. I'm afraid of Rodri. You get? Because if you really handle those people and you make it hard for them to move that ball in dangerous areas of the pitch, then you won't see any activity coming in from Erwin Haaland. And Lisandro Martinez is not facing Erwin Haaland for the very first time. He played against him last season in the Champions League when Borussia Dortmund were really being beaten by Ajax by four goals to nil. Same manager, Eric Ten Hag. Remember that very well and remember the name. Obviously, same player, Lisandro Martinez, and made it hard for him to score. So let no one lie to you that we are playing against Haaland. We are playing against City because they are having the brilliant midfield of De Bruyne, of which I really believe in De Bruyne. We also have Ericsson. If Casemiro starts, I think Casemiro is a better player than Rodri. Um, Gundogan in there for you, Bruno. So I think we are not far apart from this side. And I believe we can go in and put in a result that is really so much positive as far as this game of football is concerned. So Eric Ten Hag, press conference reaction. Martial and Rashford are back. Maguire out. And very many others. So guys, last video of the day. Feel free to go into the comment section. Tell me what you think about Eric Ten Hag press conference reaction. As far as this game of football is concerned, Rock and David happens to be my name. United Matters channel is the YouTube channel you've been watching me on. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. I sign out for now. See you later. I hand you over to the Almighty Lord to protect you abundantly because this is what you deserve and you need to go ahead and really say the best to him and beg him. You respond. Even if you're in a trying moment, God will help you out. I'm out.